Let's take a look at another problem. Uh, we're given an array of integers and we want to check if it's sorted. So let's suppose the array is called x and let's suppose it has length n. When we say it's sorted, typically what we mean is it's sorted in non-decreasing order. And here's what that means. We're saying that x0 must be less than or equal to x1, x1 must be less than or equal to x2, and so on, all the way up to xn minus 2 must be less than or equal to xn minus 1. Remember, these are the last two elements in the array. So just let's take a look at an example or two. Uh, so here's this array A, it has length 3, and it has these integers in it. Now you can see it's not sorted specifically. Uh, you can see that A0 is strictly larger than A1. So negative numbers can be there, and you can see that the property breaks. Here's another example. Uh, this array B, well, this one is sorted because duplicates are okay. Remember that B0 is less than or equal to, it's equal to B1. And then B1 is strictly less than B2, B2 is strictly less than B3. So it obeys these conditions. Uh, sometimes they're equal, sometimes they're strictly less than. Uh, both those are allowed. Okay, so with those two examples out of the way, let's take a look at the code that we want to write. It's going to return an int uh, because it's going to return 1 if the array is sorted and it's going to return 0 otherwise. And notice that we have a const int array because this function is not going to try and modify the values of the array x. It's simply going to check these properties. So let's try and see what code we will have to write to check all these conditions. Remember, we have to check this condition and this condition and this condition and so on. So when we look at these conditions, we see a pattern, right? We're seeing x0 less than or equal to x1, x1 less than or equal to x2. Uh, in general, we're seeing xi less than or equal to xi plus 1. So that's the general pattern that we have to look for. So once we have understood that, we can try and write our loop. We'll try all the values of i, and inside the uh, body of the loop, we will check if xi is less than or equal to xi plus 1. Now we know that if it's not the case, meaning if xi is strictly greater than xi plus 1, then in fact it's not sorted. Right? So in that case, we can just return 0. Otherwise, we'll return 1 to indicate that it is sorted. Now, this version of the code is buggy. Um, so I encourage you to pause the video here and go to the link on Python Tutor and try and see what the bug is. After you have tried this, uh, resume the video and we will discuss. So I'm going over to Python tutor, uh, we're going to test this uh, array uh, 1, minus 3, 2, which we know is not sorted. So we're expecting this function to print 0 up here in the text box. So let's see if it works correctly on this input. Uh, so here is our array 1, minus 3, 2. We now call the sorted function. Remember that n is 3 and x points to the beginning of this array. And now we're going to enter this for loop. So the initial value of i is 0, which is less than n. And so we enter the body of the for loop. And now we want to check if x0, so x0 is 1, and it is strictly greater than x1, which is minus 3. So yes, x0 is strictly greater than x1. So we will enter this if statement. And on line 6, we will return 0 as we are expecting. And so when we return, we see the value 0 is printed by the main. So it works. Well, it works on this one test input. Um, why don't we test it on something else? So let's edit this code. Let's say we make it 1, 3, 2. Right? Now this is also not sorted, right? Because although x uh, you know, the zeroth element is less than or equal to the oneth element. The oneth element is not less than or equal to the twoth element. Three is strictly more than two. So on this, we're expecting it again to return the value zero. So in general, you should test your code on multiple inputs. 
Just because it works on some inputs doesn't mean that it's correct. Um, in fact, uh, just because you have tested it on even thousands of inputs sometimes doesn't tell you if it's correct or not. Each time it works, it gives you maybe a little bit more confidence that it's correct, uh, but you really don't know for sure if it's correct. You don't know if there is some input on which it fails. So let's try it on this array, uh, 1, 3, 2. We call the uh, sorted function with n and x the same way. Once again, we enter the loop with i equal to 0. Now this time we find that x0 is not strictly more than x1. x0 is 1, x1 is 3, and 1 is less than or equal to, strictly less than in this case, 3. So we skip past the if, we go to the else, and we return 1. So this function just compared the first two elements and just on the basis of that, it's immediately come up with an answer. In this case, it said, it's sorted. Wait a minute, we haven't looked at the rest of the array. So clearly, in the case when x0 is not larger than x1, when we come to the else case, it is premature to return 1 here. We should not be returning 1 here. Now, I've given this code because many times we see beginner students making this mistake. So the condition that we want to check is for every consecutive pair, we want to verify that xi is less than or equal to xi plus 1. That's the condition we want to verify. So it's okay to have code like this that as soon as that as soon as you find that condition violated, you can immediately say the answer is no, return zero. But just because you find that the condition is true, meaning we're coming to the else case uh, for one pair, doesn't mean you are ready to return. You have to continue checking other pairs. So else return one is incorrect. Now, we should return 1 somewhere, and the only question is where should we return it? If not in the else, then where? Well, we have to do all pairs, so we have to finish the for loop. And it's only after the for loop is finished over here, here we know, we know that xi uh, is less than or equal to xi plus 1 for all i. Right. How do we know that? Well, if this condition were not true for some i, we would have found it, right? Because not true means xi is strictly greater than xi plus 1. So if there was such an i, we would have found it in the for loop and then we would have returned 0. So if we have reached line 9, we know for sure that this condition is true. And here we can simply return 1. In fact, it's better to actually leave that comment in there uh, as a reminder to us that uh, we have uh, done the right thing. So this version of the code hopefully uh, will uh, return zero because at some point we will find this condition is false. And that point is going to be in the next iteration of the loop in this case. We're just going to verify that by stepping through the code. Once again, we get to this point and we enter the loop with i equal to zero. This time, when we check if x0 is strictly larger than x1, again, we find it's not true, but notice where the visualization goes. This if condition is not true, so we will have to go to the next iteration of the loop, and that's exactly what it shows us. So now it's going to uh, increment the value of i. It's going to increment it to uh, 1. I've lost focus on this. So the value of i increases to 1. Uh, x1 is uh, now greater than x2 because i is 1, x1 is 3, uh, xi plus 1 is 2, and this condition is true. So we enter the if statement and we return 0 to indicate that it's not sorted. So it has found out that this array is not sorted. Now once again, you should look at this code and say, we have tested it on some inputs. Is it correct? It seems to be working. It's worth trying it on many different types of inputs just in case there is a bug. 
Now there is a bug and it's worth trying to find it. So pause the video here before I discuss the solution in the next part. So I hope you had a chance to think about this. I'm going to edit this code and show you uh, an example of an input on which this will produce an error. So I've given a sorted array, right? So this is uh, x0 is 1, which is less than or equal to x1, which is 2, which is less than or equal to x2, which is 3. So this is a sorted array. So we're expecting the answer to be 1. So let's actually step through the code and see what happens. Uh, we call the function with this array. Initial value of i is 1. This if condition is not true, so we skip it. Next value of i is 1. This condition is not true, so we skip it. Next value of i is 2. 2 is still less than 3, so we're now checking if x2, when i is 2, x2, is greater than x3. Now remember the array has length 3, so the elements are numbered 0 to 2. We are now, with, with i equal to 2, we're checking if x2 is greater than x3. There is no x3. So here's what Python Tutor does when you try and step through this. It marks an error. And it has a, a, a statement here. It says, that's a little hard to read, conditional jump depends on uninitialized values. This is not very helpful here. But what it's telling us in this case is that this statement is not legal. We are in fact trying to access x3, which doesn't exist. This array only has length 3. Now I want to warn you that if you try to run this code on any um, actual machine, not on Python Tutor, it would probably work. And the reason it would work is when we try and access x3, we will basically try and access some value that is located over here in memory. And it's very likely that our code is going to be able to access that and do something with that value. It's going to compare 3 with that value and it's going to return an answer which depends on what's over here. And of course, we don't know what that value is. It's uninitialized. So that's essentially what this error message by Python Tutor is trying to tell us. It's uninitialized what you're trying to access, this x3. So this is a mistake. We shouldn't be trying to access x3. There is no uh, element 3. So we have to fix the code. And the way we fix the code is we don't go all the way up to i equals n minus 1. Remember the last pair that we wanted to compare was xn minus 2 and xn minus 1. So we actually have to write this condition. So this is once again a reminder uh, not to be so hasty in writing the loop. Uh, we have talked about uh, cases where the uh, initial condition has to be slightly different. Uh, we have to uh, sometimes change these conditions. We have to sometimes change uh, even the increment. So it's very important to uh, check all cases uh, that you can think about. Of course, there are times when we miss a certain case. That's part of the art of learning to program. So this time, if you try and run this, you will find that the loop doesn't execute uh, when i is incremented to 2, because when i is incremented to 2, 2 is no longer strictly less than n minus 1, because remember, n is 3. So when i increases to 2, we actually exit the loop. In this case, we return 1 to indicate that this array is sorted. So with that example, uh, we are going to now move on to yet another uh, incorrect uh, example of a loop going through an array. And I hope you're finding these examples useful.